What's up guys, I'm back and it is time to finish off this rear end revamp, finish off the bed bob and the rear bumper. No long intros today, we're gonna dive right in. Everything is sitting just how I left it in episode two. And my first task is to pull this bumper off, grind a little more off this inside face just so I can hammer it around a little easier, it's binding up right now. And then I'm going to position this thing where I want it and tack it on. Before I final weld, I wanna get the swing out back on and the tire back on and swing this thing out one more time. I tried to do it once, but because it's just clamped, uh, <laughs> it wanted to fall right off. So I wanna swing it out, make sure everything looks good there, and then we're gonna get this thing on there for good. So that's where we're starting. Let's dive in. Let's finish it off, guys. <laughs> I've also decided I want to put a little more weld around the barrel that goes through this tube just to thicken it up a little bit because when it's swung out it's going to be under <laughs> a lot of loads. So I'm going to grind these welds down a bit just to make room for some bigger ones. I also want to cap off the ends of the tubes that wrap around the sides of the truck. And to do that, I'm going to just trim off a little on each side to even them up and cut out some plate. I think I'll use eighth inch plate just to make some round caps and weld them on there and grind it flush. these tubes. So I've decided that while I am reinforcing this barrel, I'm gonna add one more piece of tube here. I'm gonna add this piece of tube that essentially meets pretty close to the center of this bend radius at one end of the barrel, and then it comes over here and ties into the frame mounting plate just in front of this other tube. And I'm doing this because I believe when the swing out's open, or even when it's closed, I may get some deflection right where the swing out sits here. And I think it could bend this entire tube down or want to deflect this entire bumper and stress it right at this corner. So I think this piece of tube will help mitigate that. So I'm gonna chop it here, I'm gonna chop it here. We're gonna fit it in here and weld it on. And I think that will be all the strengthening I need for the swing out. Hey guys, check it out. Got my piece of tubing cut and notched. It's gonna fit in there just like that. And I think that is gonna add a lot of strength to the swing out area. So I'm happy. I'm gonna weld this on. All right guys, the ends are capped. I have re-welded the barrel for the hinge and it's time to get this thing on the truck. All right, so far so good. All right guys, I stopped filming because <laughs> this thing took me forever to line up. Uh, combined with the frame not being perfectly square and the body being all walked out, it's kind of hard to get this thing lined up. But I think I've got it. I think I am right where I want to be. So it's time to weld it on. 
So I'm gonna tack it on sufficiently and then throw the swing out on, swing it out, see how things look. So <laughs> fingers crossed that this turns out well. I actually ran a few beads just because I really don't want this thing moving even when I put the spare tire on there. They're in an easy to remove spot so if it looks bad I can cut it off still. Always have a way out guys. <laughs> this thing is so much lighter than my last bumper. It's unbelievable. Now unfortunately I only have one wrench that's big enough for this one and three sixteenths Sorry, 1 and 13 sixteenths hex head. So we're going to improvise here. There we go. Oh, I'm getting good at this, guys. Swing it out. Let's see how this goes. I'm gonna move the camera. Ha <laughs> ha! Guys, that's awesome. I am stoked guys, that thing swings out perfectly and it's rock solid, even with just minimal amounts of weld on the bumper. I'm very happy I added this extra brace. I think it really minimizes the deflection in the bumper. It's just a really solid setup. I could not be happier. That is a heavy spare. That thing, every time I pick it up, I'm like, geez, that's a lot of weight back here on a you know, steel wheel with a 35 inch tire, an old 35 inch tire, so I bet that thing is just beefy as heck. But this thing can handle it, and I am quite happy about that. That's all I have time for this morning, unfortunately. But I will be back soon, and I'm going to get started on the latch. I have that 2,000 pound clamping latch that I showed you guys. I'm going to throw that on here, and that thing should keep this swing out locked down when it's closed. So, it's like to get that on here. Also going to finish welding the bumper mounting arms, and I'm going to add those diagonal braces in here. Uh, we're going to lift the bed up and weld those on. So, I'm out of here for this morning, but this thing is turning out really nicely. See you guys soon. Good morning, everybody. It is a nice sunny Friday morning, and I'm back in the garage uh, before class trying to get a little bit done. My goal this morning is to get these diagonal cross members made up. So I'm going to cut some tube and notch it and lift the bed up just enough. I, I can't really get it all the way off in the garage, but hoping I can prop it up in a way that gives me some space to weld around uh, the tube that's going to mount from here to the bumper tube. I might put one more in the middle. I'm not sure yet. I think I might. So anyway, I'm going to cut that tube and get after it. All right, I've got the bed expertly propped up. <laughs> not so much, <laughs> but it is time to put these cross members in, or sorry, these braces in. And I've already cut and notched them. I figure you guys have seen me cut and notch enough too for one lifetime, so went ahead and did that. But it's time, guys. Let's uh, get them in here. Well, I got these diagonal braces on, and I also finished the welding on the top side of the bumper mounting arms. That's as far as I got, unfortunately. I gotta go to class, but it's looking pretty good. I am pleased. I will be back shortly to possibly put a couple of pieces right in the middle here. I think that would be a good idea. All right, I'll be back. All right, I have cut 
notched and placed the last two pieces of tube here in the center of the bumper. I'm gonna weld these in real quick and then we are done with the tube work and it's time to move to the latch. Let's get these things burned in. Last pieces are burned in, so milestone, guys. That's pretty exciting. Uh, next order of business, possibly last order of business besides paint, is to get this latch on there. So it's got a four, like a square bolt or hole pattern on the back here. My plan, as I kind of went over in the CAD video, is to cut a piece of this. This is three eighths mild steel. I'm going to cut a piece about the size of that back plate and then drill and tap four holes in it. And then I'm going to cut a notch in this swing out, set it back so that the face of the piece of steel I'm gonna make and drill and tap is flush with back end of this tube. So we'll see how that goes. Then I'm hoping I can bolt the latch right on, weld the hook on here, get it dialed in. So, time for some hand machining. Not my favorite thing to do, but let's see if I can pull it off. There we go. This is gonna take a while. Two hours later. Well, amazingly, I drilled and hand tapped this plate uh, without too much difficulty. So, now I'm going to cut a notch in this swing out, probably about three eighths of an inch deep, and set this thing in there, tack it in, and uh, see if we can't get this latch mocked up in, in a way that I like. So before I am completely done with the latch, even though it's looking really good, I am someone who likes redundancy and uh, safety factor. And even though this thing has a little locking latch, which I trust, you know, it's a nicely designed little locking switch. If I lock it and jiggle that, it can't come unlocked. But you know, I just, I really want to make sure that this swing out is not going to open uh, while I'm cruising, bombing down the highway or whatever. Um, that would really, really suck. So I like having an extra locking pin. Um, so what I'm going to do, or going to try, is I have these light tabs. Um, these are like eighth inch steel bent. So they're, they're decently strong. Um, I have a whole pack of them. I just keep picking away at the pack when I'm, whenever I want to install a light somewhere. And then I have this, uh, like pop pin plunger from my last 4X Innovations kit. What I want to do here, let's see if I can hold the camera and show you guys, is throw the light tab, now you can't see that too well, but back under there, and then put the pop pin on the swing out so that when it's closed, it's uh, sitting in that position, and I have to actually pull the plunger to open the swing out. Um, if that doesn't work, because, I don't know, for whatever reason, the pop pin doesn't clear or something. I have some detent pins, too. I have some various length 3 8 detent pins. I'm going to try the, this first because it would be a more elegant solution and a lot easier to open. And I don't have to yank on a detent pin every single time and possibly lose it. I mean, I guess I could put a lanyard on it, but whatever. Anyway, we're going to try this first. Let's do it. All right, guys, check this out. All right, so that's in there. And I don't even have the clamp 
clamping latch latched. So let me, oh, yeah, that's awesome. This latch will hold it all by itself. And uh, now I have redundancy. That thing is not gonna come open. And it's still pretty easy to open. So all I do is just that, that. Easy work, guys, and a lot of peace of mind. Now just because I was once the most poser of overlanders <laughs> and old habits die hard, I want one light tab back here for a light pod. Jokes aside, it's really useful to have a little bit of extra backup light or a lot of extra backup light or just rear light in general. So I think having one pod back here will be pretty useful. I'm going to throw it right here, right next to the latch, try to get it in a spot that, you know, won't interfere with the latch, but also isn't shaded too much by the tire. I'm thinking right there. So throw that on there and see how it looks. All right, guys, last addition to the bumper is this piece right here. This is a plate that I designed up and it is just a license plate holder. I'm gonna you know, take it out of the packaging. I'm gonna put some quarter 28 weld nuts on the back side of these four holes so I don't need to mess with a hex nut and bolt every single time and not that I'll be taking the plate on an awful lot, but still. Um, and then I'm gonna weld it right there, I think. And then, so here's my plate. <laughs> I gotta unfold it first. Uh, so it'll be fit right on there. And then I have a spot right here for a license plate light. And the one I have has that two hole pattern. It's gonna sit right there. And I'm stupid, I should have had one more hole cut in here because the wires actually protrude out the back side of the light, but I can drill one more hole, no big deal. I'm gonna do that real quick, get that on here, and then we're gonna pull the truck out, guys. It is time. Finally happening. I'm oh. <laughs> this road is junk. It's finally happening. I'm bringing the truck home, and we will finish off the rear end revamp there. I'm going to paint the bumper, finish the bodywork, and wire up that one reverse light. And then, guys, I think we are done. Check this out, though. So I'm going pretty straight. That is my steering wheel right now. So <laughs> I definitely didn't set up those tie rods right, but I kind of expected that. No big deal, we can fix that. Um, let's hope I make it home though. This is uh, the first time I've driven the truck on the road uh, since November, I think. So, and I've done a whole lot since then. So let's see if it's uh, still roadworthy. All right guys, let's do it.
Here it is guys, the final product, the new rear bumper, the new rear swing out. I couldn't just film the conclusion in a driveway somewhere. I had to take it out onto a local trail. So that's where we are, just a little trail near where I live. And uh, I wanna give you guys one final look at this beast of a project. I am very, very happy with how it turned out. I think it looks great. It's been holding up just fine. I've taken it on a few pretty bumpy rides and nothing's moving around, nothing's shifting, nothing's letting loose. Obviously the real test comes when I start beating it up, but I'm just really happy with how this whole thing turned out. The truck has this awesome look, all business baby. And uh, I got this backup light wired up here. Let me show you. Check that out. Nice and bright. Works great at night. Um, whether you're trying to back up in the dark or you got someone tailgating you a little too close. <laughs> Although, uh, you didn't hear me say that. <laughs> well guys, that's it for this one. I am just so psyched on how this thing has turned out. The combo of the bed bob and the two bumper, besides looking amazing, I really think it will allow me to tackle terrain that I previously just couldn't touch. So I'm excited to test that out. I have trail footage coming. I know it's been a while. I'm sorry about that. But I have some trail footage coming, some trail edits. I'm psyched to get those out. And I have another big mod on the table for this thing. I'm not gonna reveal it yet, but it's really cool. I'm so excited to get started on it. And once again, it's gonna step this truck up in capability big time. So if you're psyched for that, please subscribe. If you're psyched for the trail edits, please subscribe. And uh, comment, let me know what you think about this thing. Uh, let me know if you like it. Let me know if you hate that I took the cap off and changed it all up, but a little too late now. And uh, throw me a like if you like the video. I really appreciate it. But anyway, guys, I'm going to enjoy the rest of this beautiful day. I'm going to finish this trail out. I will see you soon. Have a great weekend.